Hello, uh, my name's Paul Robinson and I, I wrote uh, the Recovering with T3 book. In my most recent blog post I talked about the background to the circadian T3 method. Now the circadian T3 method is, a, it is also known as CT3M or T3CM and it's been used now by hundreds of thyroid patients all over the world uh, to improve adrenal function. Uh, it requires a small dose of T3 containing medication and it's a very safe and systematic way of improving the function of the adrenal glands and offers the potential to many patients to um, reduce or completely get off um, the use of uh, adrenal steroids like hydrocortisone and uh, Florineth and other adrenal hormones as well. Um, in this blog post, I'm going to talk about how it's applied um, rather than the background and I hope that helps some people and complements the information that's already in the Recovering T3 book. Um, the circadian T3 method is, is just one part of the overall T3 dosage management process which, which I document completely in the Recovering with T3 book. Um, however, Many, many thyroid patients are actually using the circadian T3 method to um, improve their adrenal function, whether they're on T3 only, or on T4, T3 medication, or on a natural thyroid. And in some cases, they're just applying the circadian T3 method without any thyroid doses elsewhere during the day. So um, I'll just continue and I'll talk about uh, the method itself and how relatively straightforward it is to apply and uh, hopefully um, that will help those of you that have the book already and maybe encourage some of you to to get the book and find out far more about it. The first thing to be said is that the Skadi T3 method is there to improve adrenal function. So the prerequisite for this is that there is some known under function of the adrenal glands. Usually that might um, be found through an adrenal saliva test uh, which gives four saliva samples and res the result of um, cortisol um, and potentially DHEA during the day. And I would expect that th those results should show that there is a, uh, a lack of cortisol during the day. And, and if, if it doesn't, if the results are perfectly normal or high, then the circadian T3 method is, is, is not really applicable, uh, at least until that situation changes. So it really is about improving adrenal function and also potentially about improving aldosterone function if aldosterone is low, um, potentially if DHEA is low, um, but that's mainly, mainly aimed at um, improving cortisol uh, levels. Okay, let's talk about the preparation work before applying the circadian T3 method. I believe that everyone ought to be working with a good family doctor or endocrinologist. Uh, there are lab tests that have to be run um, so that the circadian T3 method can be applied uh, with enough data to know that it's applicable and with enough data to know that other factors are taken account of. So finding a good family doctor or endocrinologist is really going to be very important. Um, one of the first things that need to be done is um, that basic nutrient tests need to be um, performed and issues like low iron, if, if they exist, need to be uh, identified and then uh, appropriate supplementation needs to be started. B12 and folate and vitamin D can also be issues uh, for some people and, and again lab tests can be done uh, to identify those. I also believe that uh, adequate supplementation of some of the key vitamins and minerals that are involved in the processing of thyroid hormones and the processing of adrenal hormones uh, is extremely important. So I, I generally um, like to see uh, the use of vitamin C and B complex um, and vitamin B12 if it's applicable and, and multi-minerals. These are all very safe doses that can be found in health food stores and, and, and um, chemist shops. I'm not talking about anything out of the ordinary in terms of super high doses. Um, 
And magnesium, again, is another, is another key nutrient which is involved in many different hormone pathways. Vitamin C, for instance, is, is used by the adrenal glands in, in very high volume. The adrenal glands use vit more vitamin C than any other organ in the body. So um, the book itself here um, talks, talks about the supplements and the types of doses that are applicable. But again, they are very, very safe doses. I don't talk about high doses of anything here. And at having those in place before beginning the circadian T3 method makes an enormous amount of sense because it removes um, a complete element of, of uncertainty from the process. Uh, for instance, if someone was, was very low on vitamin B1, they can have um, high heart rate issues with thyroid hormone, which can be desperately confusing um, uh, when thyroid hormone is, 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 is used. Um, so supplementation is, is, should be seen as um, a critical part of uh, the T3 dosage management process and the circadian T3 method. And again, having a, having a good relationship with a doctor should enable you to, to get the right lab tests done and begin supplementation if required. Okay, um, let me turn, us, turn to adrenals themselves. And again, this is in chapter uh, 19 of the Recovering with T3 book and getting the proper lab tests for a, adrenal test is, uh, for adrenal status is really important. Um, I'm now a firm uh, believer in the use of the adrenal saliva test uh, which gives uh, four cortisol results throughout the day, a morning, a noon, a late afternoon and an evening uh, cortisol result is, uh, is available through an adrenal saliva test. And the interesting thing about the adrenal saliva test is that it provides free cortisol because uh, cortisol moves from the blood into the saliva without any um, binding protein. And so it, rep it is a really good representation of actual cortisol status. And um, it works. And <laughs> it's, it's phenomenally valuable because you can not only see low cortisol levels, but you can see peaks of high cortisol levels later in the day. And those can be dealt with by, by other techniques like the use of adrenal adaptogens and, and zinc. Um, so getting the test done before beginning the circadian T3 method is extremely useful. If you can't use an adrenal saliva test, then a 24-hour urinary cortisol can be valuable. If you can't do that, then maybe persuading your doctor to do multiple serum cortisol result, uh, tests during the day uh, can be valuable as well. The standard method of just doing a single cortisol um, test it, it is really not that helpful on its own. For those of you that may have very, very serious uh, low adrenal issues, then if you're already not, if you're not already on um, any hydrocortisone or adrenal product, then having a synacthin test, or it may be called an ACTH stimulation test, can also be extremely important to rule out conditions like Addison's disease, where there is actual adrenal, true adrenal damage being done by autoantibodies or some other disease. In addition to that, uh, in very rare cases, uh, people may have a low adrenal function due to hyperpituitarism, because the pituitary may not be sending the the ACTH signal to the adrenal glands and, and it's, it's not a very common condition but if there's any uncertainty about that then having the proper test for that um, can be extremely valuable and that is usually an insulin tolerance test and that needs to be run by an endocrinologist in a hospital situation because it, it's quite a difficult test to run. Now it's extremely unlikely that that's the case. But uh, in, in the rare cases where there is serious adrenal concerns, then that, that might need to be run as well before beginning the circadian T3 method.